you know what? Satan could throw out a spiritual Lego and you're over here crumping because y'all just stepped on this spiritual Lego over here. Hey fam, it's Rachel. Today on Crack Your Bible, I want to talk to you about the importance of putting on the full armor of God because so many Christians out there, they don't know why. They give, oh, they just can't figure out why things are so terrible for them, why they can't uh, see any miracles happening? Why isn't God answering their prayers? And it's like, well, first of all, you're going out onto the battlefield with Satan butt naked. How's that going to work out for you? Y'all know that's real stupid to go out fighting butt naked with no weapons. So before we get started, make sure you hit subscribe with a bell with a parenthesis so you're notified of a new gospel message because of course Satan and YouTube and Google, they're one and the same, but they do not want you to know the gospel and they will never notify you of a new gospel message unless you hit subscribe with a bell with a parenthesis. So let's get it started. Now I am in the middle of getting over my illness because Satan thought he was going to take me down and it's like, Nope. We are going to be praying in the spirit, speaking in tongues, taking authority over these things. And what happened? Oh, I don't know if y'all have noticed in the past week, we have gone from like 2,300 subscribers to 5,000 subscribers. And it's like, y'all don't understand how powerful praying in tongues is because the weapons of our warfare are not of this world. And when we are praying in the spirit, like we've been talking about, there are different types of speaking in tongues. There's three different types, but one, not even Satan knows what you're saying. So you are tearing down demonic strongholds and he is just completely blind. He doesn't know what's going on. So thank God that the blinders have come off. The word of God is being preached where it is not invisible. It is visible to people and people are going to know Jesus. They're going to understand scripture. So praise God for that. And Satan thought he was going to keep this channel hidden, keep it blind. No, 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 no. Because whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. And we already talked about this with the authority of the believer. I'll put that video right up here. And also links are always in the description box below. But we have to understand who we are in Jesus Christ. And who we are in Jesus Christ is we're God's children. We are adopted sons into his family. And every single day, we are going to battle against Satan and the schemes of Satan. Because yes, while we're saved and we're going to go to heaven and spend eternity with Jesus one day, we have a job to do here on earth. So yeah, salvation, that's, that's great. But here on earth, we have a job to do and we can't just sit back doing nothing, waiting on Jesus to return. We have to go out and share the gospel with others. We have to go out and share our faith. And when we do these things, Satan is going to try to hinder us so that we're sitting at home, licking our wounds, trying to figure out, oh, how can I, you know, make myself feel better instead of like, no matter what happens, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to continue to fight so that when Jesus comes back, I can say, Jesus, look, I didn't waste my time. I didn't waste my gifts. And of course, we already talked about that on uh, the crowns of a believer and your rewards in heaven for a believer. But I want people to understand salvation is one thing. But the other thing is Jesus told us that we have a job to do. Go out into all the world, preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead. And it's like, you see Christians, that's not happening. They're so busy trying to fight off the personal attacks of Satan that they can't go out and do the things that Jesus has told them to go out and do. And that's a problem. I want everybody to be suited up with a full armor of God so that they can go out and fight against Satan. Because people, I want you to understand that if you think that you're just going to go out with the helmet of salvation on and nothing else, you're completely butt naked, no weapons, Satan is going to take you out. You know what? Satan could throw out a spiritual Lego and you're over here crumping because y'all just stepped on this spiritual Lego over here. He's going to take you out with a little tiny brick. That can't happen. That's why Jesus gives us these things through his death, burial, and resurrection that we can use because the weapons of our warfare are not of this world. And so often Christians don't understand that every single day, if you're doing the things that God tells you to do, Satan's going to be throwing fiery darts. Now, if you're not doing anything for the kingdom of God, Satan's going to be like, he's not bothering me one bit. He's not doing anything to harm me one bit. So he leaves you alone. So if you're, if you're uh, not experiencing any sort of spiritual warfare, 
uh, you need to reevaluate your life because what are you doing to further God's kingdom? Because when you're furthering God's kingdom, we are going and we're binding the strong man, tying him up so that we can plunder his house. This is an attack on Satan. He is the prince of the air, the God of this world, and we're plundering his house through Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, by taking the, the people that he thought were his, and we are bringing them over to the kingdom of God through the Holy Spirit, who leads people to Jesus, and Jesus leads them through the, to the Father. And I want Christians to understand that when you go attack somebody's house, they're going to fight back. They're going to try to take you out. So you need to be prepared. You need to have your full armor ready to go. Now, people try to make the gospel way more difficult than it has to be. And it's this is not some uh, mystery that you have to study. Paul is just speaking in a metaphor. And I just want to keep this really, really simple, really basic for you guys. But Paul, when he was writing to the Ephesians, he was under house arrest in Rome. Everybody knew what a Roman guard looked like because Paul was guarded by Roman soldiers and under house arrest. Uh, Judea, Israel, this was all a Roman province. So there's Roman soldiers everywhere. We talked about that in our video about Fort Antonio, which I'll put right up here. And, you know, everybody knew what Roman soldiers looked like. So Paul was just using a metaphor for the things that we have through Jesus Christ to fight our spiritual battles against Satan by using the imagery of a Roman soldier, like the helmet of salvation. Hey, no matter what happens to me, I know that I have salvation. So whether I live, whether I die, I know that I'm going to spend eternity with Jesus Christ. So that is one of my protections. You have the breastplate of righteousness. And that is also something that protects me. I can go out and do the things that Jesus has told me to do because I know that I am i don't have to rely on myself. I don't have to rely on my own works to save me because Jesus, his righteousness is what covers me. That's why he was a atonement for our sin because he was without sin. He was blameless. And his blood is what makes us righteous. When he died on the cross and he rose again, his blood is what gives us life. There's life in the blood. So his righteousness is what covers us. And the prophet Isaiah, which we talked about in the video about uh, biblical profanity, put that up there. He said that our personal righteousness is like used dirty tampons. That's how disgusting and filthy God sees our personal righteousness. When we think that we're going to, uh, be able to have right standing with God through our own works. God's like, you're disgusting, you're filth. But when God sees us through Jesus Christ, all he sees is Jesus's righteous blood all over us. So that's what covers us. That's what protects us. That's why we can do the things that we do for God because Jesus has made us righteous. Now, the next thing you have is you have the belt of truth. Now, everybody back then wore tunics, which are basically like a long dress. And that's great if you need to squat and use the bathroom, but it's not so great if you need to start running, if you need to get ready to go to war. So what you would do is you would have a belt on and you would pull up the back hem of your tunic and you'd pull it between your legs and then you'd tuck it into your belt. So now you have a pair of shorts and that way you're unencumbered by your tunic as you move about. And this gird up your loins with the belt of truth is kind of like a figure of speech. It's like, let's get ready to rumble. Let's buckle up real quick because it's like, hey, you need to get ready because we're going to go out fighting. We can do these things. We can have the freedom of movement because we have the truth of the gospel. We're not just stuck at home and worried about, uh, oh, well, I'm going to get messed up. And, oh, oh, I don't want to mess up here. Oh, I'm going to lose my salvation if I, if I uh, don't observe this or don't observe that. And it's like, no, I have the belt of truth. I'm not encumbered by legalism and the traditions of men. I have the truth of the gospel so that way I can go out and fight against Satan. I can go out and share the gospel with people. And that brings me to the shoes. So your feet are shod with the shoes of the gospel of peace. And y'all already know you can't go out walking barefoot on rocky terrain, muddy terrain, uh, terrain that has debris all over it. If it's hot, you're going to be burning your feet. And 
you can't go out and fight against an enemy if you're constantly looking where you're going. We walk by faith, not by sight, because we have the gospel of peace on our feet. We can just go straight through. We're not hopping around looking for a soft place to land. We can just go straight through and we're not taken down by just the circumstances that we're in. Oh, we're in a place where the terrain's not so good and that's what's going to be the thing that takes me out. No, it doesn't matter what kind of terrain that we're in. We can walk straight through and we can hold our ground because we have these shoes, these shoes on. And the gospel of peace is, hey, I'm not trying to earn my salvation through my own works. I'm not trying to rack my brain over how I'm going to save myself and looking back on all the bad things that I've done and I'm just crippled by guilt and shame. No, I have the gospel of peace that I'm forgiven, that I'm sanctified, that I'm righteous before God. And I can go out and I can share the gospel quickly, effectively, through long distances, through rocky terrain, because I have these shoes on. And the shoes back in Roman times, uh, the Roman soldiers had cleats on. So if it was slippery, if it was rocky, if there was debris, they could hold their ground and go and fight. You might feel like, ah, the, the terrain around me is really bad, but it's like, nope, you got cleats on, you're going to be just fine. And that's how it is with the gospel of peace. You can have a terrible past or whatever, but through the gospel of peace, you can stand firm on the word of God. You can stand firm and fight against the schemes of the devil. But you're also going to have your shield of faith. And your shield of faith is, I know that... No matter what, God is faithful to do the things that he said that he's going to do. So when Satan is throwing out these fiery darts, you have your faith and you know that God is always true to his word. He's not a liar. He is not the author of confusion and that he is true to his word. If he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. So when Satan says, oh, you're, you're messed up. Oh, God's not going to love you. No, I know these things about God. So that faith is what protects me. And I want people to understand. Now, Perry Stone talked about this. So I'm going to make a little playlist. I'll probably have a link in the description box with the playlist because I'm only allowed to link five things in these little videos. But he talked about how Roman shields were like the size of a door. And what people would do is they would get dry and crusty because they're made out of natural materials. You'd have boards and then they'd be covered in leather. And to keep the the leather from cracking, what they would do is they would cover it in water, they'd keep it wet, and they would also oil it. And how that is representative of having the word of God, where Jesus is a spring of living water. And in Ephesians 5, 26, it talks about how you're supposed to be renewing your mind all the time so that, that water is refreshing and renewing your shield and likewise feel that they would put on their shields to keep the leather supple so it's not cracking and breaking and it's all dry and crusty uh, that is representative of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit anoints us so when we renew our minds every day when we have the anointing of the Holy Spirit that's how we get our faith that's how we have a strong shield that that protects us from the fiery darts of the devil. Perry Stone talked about how there are these fiery darts or these fiery arrows. So you would have like a hollow tube filled with flammable material, and then you would have pitch or tar on the end of the tip of the arrowhead, and then you would light that. And then once you shot your arrow, if that shield was not supple, if it wasn't wet, it would burst into flames. It would catch on fire and so often Christians don't understand to keep up your faith. You got to be refreshing, renewing your mind every single day. You have to have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You have the, the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you so that you can increase your faith. And that is what's going to protect you from these fiery darts of the devil. Because when that arrow hit and then the wood would splinter and then all that flammable material would come down, that's all over your dry, cracked shield that is just a piece of tinder now. And that's how you lose your faith. And all of a sudden, now you're more susceptible to attacks from Satan. So 
people. The shield of faith is just, hey, every single day you're renewing your mind by praying in the spirit, reading the word of God, spending time in prayer with God. That's what the shield of faith is. It's just your prayer life. You studying the word of God, you spending time, it's your relationship with God. And that's what protects you from these fiery darts of the devil. The closer you get to God, the more that you are able to ward off these attacks because you have the word of God on the inside. And that's what brings me to the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, when Satan is telling you things in your ear, oh, you're not good enough. Oh, nobody's going to love you. Or, oh, you've messed up this time and God's, God's not going to have anything to do with you. Or, oh, you'd be better off dead. No, you speak the word of God to Satan. That's your hand to hand combat where you say, no, I know who I am in Jesus Christ. I know who I am and I know what I am and I know the authority that I ha have. And that is how you defeat Satan in this hand to hand spiritual combat. You speak the word of God to Satan. And we see that's what Jesus did during the temptation of Jesus when Satan took him on the top of the, the temple, which we talked about in our Fort Antonio video right up here. Um, he took Jesus to the temple and he was speaking lies. Oh, throw yourself down. The angels will carry you or turn these stones into bread. And what did Jesus do? Was he out there physically fighting Satan? No, he was speaking the word of God to him. He was speaking from Deuteronomy, refuting Satan with different passages from the Bible. He was wielding the sword of the spirit by speaking the word of God. And that's what you need to do. When Satan tells you lies about yourself, when he said, oh, you're not going to, you need to speak the word of God. For example, when Satan tries to make you sick, it's, hey, you know, Jesus was made a curse for us by his stripes. I am healed. I came to give you life. So it's like, you speak the word of God to Satan, and that is your hand-to-hand -hand combat. And also, what does it say? It says you need to be praying in the spirit at all times with all prayers and supplications for not only yourself, but for the saints as well. The saints are just other believers. And Perry Stone brought up something that I thought was pretty interesting because you have all of the imagery of a Roman soldier, but you don't have his javelin or his spear that he would carry around, and it's called a pilum. And before you ever get into hand-to-hand -hand combat, you would throw your javelin first. Now, you all know if you're going into war, you don't just automatically start out on hand-to-hand -hand combat where you're wielding the sword of the spirit. No, you start out with, you know, you have your archers, your artillery, all sorts of that, that's your cannonballs. Whatever, those all go first before anybody meets for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Likewise, with, with Satan in your spiritual warfare, what is the first thing that you're going to do? I'm going to pray with my spirit and I'm going to pray with my mind also. The first thing you do, what happened? When people were getting saved, they ran up, they went and traveled so that they could go lay hands on people so that they would receive the Holy Spirit. Before people even knew giant chunks of the word of God, they were speaking in tongues. They were praying in the spirit. And that is our first line of defense. That is our javelin, praying in the spirit. This is your first line of defense weapon is praying in the spirit. You can knock out Satan with one blow of a javelin real quick. Now, sometimes you're going to miss Sometimes he is going to get hit in a spot that's not going to take him out. And you are going to be able to then use your hand-to-hand -hand combat. But the first thing you use is praying in the spirit. Your prayer life is the first line of defense against Satan's attacks. Because sometimes you'll take his attacks out before they even get to the point where you have to go into hand-to-hand -hand combat. So I want Christians to understand these are all just metaphors your helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, shield of faith, sword of the spirit, feet shod with the gospel of peace. And then you also have your javelin, your prayers in the spirit always. And those are the things that you're going to be able to use against Satan to take down his schemes. So this is not something that's difficult to understand. It's just a metaphor. So pray in the spirit, spend time in the word of God, 
Remember that our righteousness comes through Jesus Christ. Be ready to share your faith. Be ready to speak the word of God into situations when Satan is trying to beat you down with lies. And understand, we can do all things. We can put on the full armor of God and use God's strength because of Jesus Christ. So that's all that I wanted to share with you. I hope you will like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you later. Bye!